Meet Diobeth, or Dio for short. He's your perfectly normal, happy, healthy 15-year-old boy who finds every reason to hang out with his friends, does his chores, but football, that's his thing. You could ask him anything about the Seattle Seahawks. Let's go 12th man! <laughs> and he could tell you anything about them from who's on the bench to the roster to the salaries, anything. At least he could at the time of this picture. You see, two years ago, Dio went from being able to go to football practice strong and healthy five days a week, a game every single Friday, to losing the ability to even open his hands. Practically overnight. And that was just the beginning of it. Days pass and Dio and his parents realize that something is terribly wrong. It's more than just a lingering football injury. And they go to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles to discover what is actually going on. Our friend Dio has a mass sitting on his brain that is affecting his motor skills and maybe more. Even though the doctors were able to perform a successful surgery within three days of his diagnosis, during his recovery, his body began to act unexpectedly. Besides the pain he started to feel, his blood pressure spiked along with his heart rate. Dio had a stroke. And now what started out as a successful surgery, promising help, ended up being a complete loss of his ability to communicate. Not to mention the loss of nearly all motor function, confining the once football player to a wheelchair. So what happens next, YouTube, is the reason why we're here. You see, Dio taught himself how to play the guitar and the piano well before all of this ever happened. He could play all of his favorite songs, and it was something that he loved to do. So once Blake, his rehab specialist, learned that singing and music were areas of strength for her young patient, she began incorporating music into their sessions daily. Dio, now affectionately known as the Ed Sheeran of Children's Healthcare Los Angeles, showed amazing progress. How did this happen? What role did music play in any of this? Many patients with aphasia can sing more than they can speak. That's because music is one of the few things that crosses both hemispheres of the brain, helping to create new neural pathways for language. As a matter of fact, later in this video, we're going to explore experiments that prove that music and sound frequencies can have a physical effect on the body on a cellular level. So it's no surprise that an entire industry is being built on the foundation of a single question. What else can music and sound itself cure in the human body? Hey, my name is Bryant. Welcome to the MC's Music at the Core Everything. Today, I'm your host, and we are asking the question in this video, can music cure cancer? The answer is, nah. Music cannot cure cancer. It just can't. Nobody has a cure to cancer, right? Let's come back to that. What about heart failure, fibromyalgia, Alzheimer's disease? For those families affected by Alzheimer's disease, it is simply one of the most devastating diagnoses that you can receive. One that carries with it a crippling toll on the patient as well as the families of the patient. It's another one of those diseases with no known cure or even a medicine to help mitigate the significant effects that this disease carries on the brain. So when Dr. Lee Bartel expanded his research of sound on the brain and body to include the treatment of Alzheimer's disease, you can imagine the implications. You see, Dr. Lee Bartel used a principle called entrainment which is a process whereby two interacting oscillating systems tend to fall into synchrony. When he realized that the brain uses 40 hertz to communicate between both hemispheres, he reasoned that he could use that same frequency outside of the body to facilitate communication inside of the brain. And it freaking worked. 
Writing and using music that contained a lot of this 40 hertz frequency, basically a low E, he began to see significant progress in patients ranging from fibromyalgia to blood flow irregularities. Soon, our doctor just started to use the simple frequency itself, playing over speakers mounted in reclining style medical chairs and prescribed 30 minutes at a time. Well, it turns out the well-known knowledge that music helped facilitate motor and speech recovery was just the beginning of the true power of music and health over all sorts of diseases. Look, I know what you're thinking. And yes, we are talking about peer-reviewed, academic, scientific documentation, not just a guy claiming that he can heal people with musical chairs. The medical benefits of music therapy are vast. We know this. But when Dr. Bartel used his revolutionary 40 hertz frequency to help many Alzheimer patients, the medical field had no choice but to take it seriously. The patient began to remember more and in rapid time actually began to slow in their symptoms for extraordinary amounts of time. Take a look at this study published in the National Library of Medicine. What you are looking at is the first systematic review focusing on randomized trials of patients with Alzheimer's disease, and the results are amazing. We are talking about literally slowing the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease in patients, not in the future, but now. Studies have shown that music, both listening and playing, introduced early enough in life helped to prevent dementia and other cognitive diseases altogether. There it is. Doctors and scientists have unanimously agreed that music prevents and cures all sorts of diseases. But here is where I have a problem with it. That statement is not true at all. If you noticed, none of the studies previously mentioned ever used the word cure. I mean, the breakthroughs are amazing. And for some of us who have gone through the despair of some of those more serious diseases, when we hear that music can slow the progress of, or alleviate the symptoms of, or significantly reduce the pain associated with, or even like in the case of the young man that we first met, where music helped to facilitate the recovery of both his motor and speech skills altogether, none of them ever said the word cure. You know why? For one, the question of does music cure this or that is the summary of a myopic and flawed view of medicine itself. Remember what I just told you. Music has been shown to have preventative effects on cognitive diseases. Well then, why would it still be an elective from which there are many to choose and or throw away? Or like we're seeing now in counties and districts all over America, music and the arts are being completely taken out to boost STEM subjects. And sometimes it's just because the people in charge don't think that it's important enough to fund. If we really believed that preventing Alzheimer's, dementia, fibromyalgia was something we could do, wouldn't we be doing it? No, I mean, the answer is no. That's because the idea of curing someone can only happen after the person has been afflicted. Chemotherapy is the leading way as of where we are now in medicine to quote unquote cure cancer. But in our emotionless and perfunctory definition of the word cure, we have prioritized the disease over the human. Chemo doesn't work every time, but its effects are universal. The sickness, hair loss, weakness, and fragility, some get through it. But after it reaches a certain stage, many don't. Understanding illness in terms of cure or no cure, binary and urgent in its implementation due to the nature of the word itself. We forget that there is another word healing. 
Dio, now affectionately known as the Ed Sheeran of Children's Healthcare Los Angeles, showed amazing progress. It was like he was famous. Music helped him communicate so much better, but it also restored his confidence, something he lost after his stroke. By the end of his initial six weeks in inpatient speech and language therapy, Dio was not only more secure in himself, but he had made leaps in communicating. He was speaking more fluently and connecting several words and phrases together. To quote one of the medical staff, we finally got to see the real Dio, the funny, social, and wonderful guy he is. He was communicating in conversations and telling jokes. It was incredible to witness. That's not a cure, that's healing. The body, the mind, and yes, the spirit. And we're not talking about a religion here. We're talking about the thing that makes us human, the human spirit. Anita Collins tells us, when you listen to music, multiple areas of your brain become engaged and active. Found was that music sets off huge numbers of networks and parts of the brain all at the same time, but at a very low level. And I said, wow, this is incredible. We've never seen anything like this. So this began the field of neuromusical research. Which Playing music over time actually makes you smarter. It's just science. And there's a consensus amongst doctors and scientists that's actually pretty well known. You want to know the effects of music on the immune system, pregnancy, real life examples of how it has saved lives? I put all those links in the description because literally, unless you want to sit here and watch a four hour long video, I can't include all of the benefits and the research being done in this field in this video. What I will do is try to spark an amazing idea to anyone watching this. Alan Harvey reminds us that all the way up to the Middle Ages, music was taught alongside math, geometry, astronomy. He says, if you asked Leonardo da Vinci if he was a scientist or an artist, he wouldn't even understand the question. They were seen as all a part of a single subject known as natural philosophy. And as we have begun to separate the sciences from music, we have neglected the fact that music evolved right alongside language and humans. It's not a separate entity that can be chosen or discarded based on how you feel that day. We see it being taken out of schools in the Western world. And the negative effects of this will be and have been far reaching and quite frankly, detrimental to the child and the rest of society. So the amazing idea is let's bring back music as a science and not simply as an elective for those who seem more inclined to enjoy it. There was nothing in this whole video that said you ever had to be good at it. Just learning an instrument early and with purpose alone does the same thing for cognitive health, motor skills, social skills, the immune system, and even a deeper understanding of self in the student. My own view is, and this might not be appreciated by a lot of music teachers, is actually the most important aspect is early on is social music making, not driving young kids to be yeah. a strat of, you know, a, a Yehudi menuhin mm. or a whatever it might be, because mm. that, my view is everyone is musical. So no, music can't cure cancer, but studies have shown that music helps with the healing process of patients with cancer. Not only with the depression and anxiety, but with the actual healing of the body after chemo, surgery, and even in hospice care. Music is a part of being human, and we need it like we need air, community, movement, water. I think that's lost when we ask what it can or can't cure. We put more emphasis on curing the disease than healing the person. And interestingly enough, there's good reason for that. The people who have invented the life-saving vaccines and antibiotics that kill diseases that were once seen as incurable and deadly, they have used the cure approach and it works. Now, I'm not a doctor, so I can't say for sure if my opinion is deeply flawed or correct, but I do know that there are people asking the same questions within the medical field. 
Music needs more experiments. It needs to be put through the rigor of the scientific method before we can claim it cures anything. It's full context from prevention to harm reduction to the maybe one day unlocking the secret communication of the mind, 40 hertz at a time. Can music cure cancer? That's not the question worth asking, in my opinion. The science and facts are there for that one. The real question is, how should we prioritize healing? Bones and blood cells? Or spirits and inner peace? Or is there even healing without both? That, I don't know. But do you? If you do, go ahead and leave your answer in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button right now. Let's link up, stay in touch, and can't wait to see what you guys have to say on this really dynamic topic. As always, thank you for joining the MCs Music at the Core Everything. I'm your host, Bryant. Peace out.